Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first Pan American, uh, meaning the continent Q&A session. Why is pricing low a problem for a service business? Why, why uh, can't we be competitive that way? Um, I mean, you, you can, of course, but, um, well, a service business. Uh, um, not all service businesses are, let's say, uh, the same. I mean, uh, being a waiter is a service business, and uh, but it, or washing a car, and washing a car is is fine, but it's it's repetitive. And what most, well, all people here uh, do is not our strictly said a repetitive um, service, and. Um, if you're specialized, if you're an expert in any way, uh, then you're sending a mixed message if you're an expert, but you're cheap. I mean, why? There's, a, there's always the question, right? Um, it took years. It took uh, some sweat and tears to, to get where, you're, uh, where you are right now. Why would you be cheap? I mean, there has to have a reason, right? Um, and it's, it's, it's my opinion that experts should not be cheap and that experts should not be order takers, right? You don't march in, uh, to a doctor's office and say, uh, I want a triple bypass and these pills by Monday, right? <laughs> that will not work. You can say, hi, I have these symptoms. And the doctor will say, yes, this is a relevant one. This, this one is not. Um, and we will do this. And we will first check this, go see a specialist. That's basically how we, we all should work. Um, and unfortunately, in, in uh, many service-oriented businesses, that's not how it happens. Some, somebody comes and says, give me... Um, two kilos uh, of, of uh, social media marketing, right? Um, give, give me one speech, please. What well, I mean, <laughs> because that, that's the difference, right? I can, um, anybody can look at a car and say, this car is washed or it's not properly washed. But uh, can you look at the speech and say, yes, this is, uh, well-crafted speech and look at another and say no this is this is not expertly um, written speech I mean you can if you're a speech uh, expert but then you don't need somebody who is an expert in speeches right it's it's the paradox um, it's the paradox that says um, if your clients uh, knew, how much value you can bring them, they actually would have to know so much about what you do. Um, they wouldn't need you, or they wouldn't be your clients, right? Okay, Michelle asks, uh, do you sub subscribe to any particular pricing philosophy? Um, there are many things that can be called pricing philosophies, but um, maybe I will be able to answer like this. There are three main bases uh, for pricing something. That's the input based, right? How many hours did it get? Uh, did the work last? Um, or how many sheets of something or scoops of ice cream? It doesn't matter. Um, then the output uh, method, uh, which says, okay, so this many cards of text, this many pages of text, this many minutes of something. So that, that's, that's output-based. Or I'm coaching three people. So per people, it's like this. Or um, I have a, a client that started charging um, basically psych help, help per problem, not per hour. Um, so th that's, that's uh, output-based. And uh, the third one is uh, the value-based, the uh, value-based 
so it doesn't matter how much uh, it takes me. It matters how much do you get from it, right? It's for some, it's the holy grail. It's something often talk about. Uh, it's not applicable to everything, but it's applicable to many things. So if you can value price, um, value price. If you can't, then find something, some way of pricing that is uh, familiar enough to your clients, uh, but uh, mm, different enough so you actually send the message by using it, right? Okay, uh, I hope I, I answered. Um, Ryan said, how do I establish evaluation for my product or service as a starting point? Um, can you elaborate a little bit, Ryan? Yeah, so if you're, I, I know there's there are different ways to kind of tie that value. Um, and you kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, you know, you can establish what whatever the, the current market value is of that item if it's you know commodity based. Yeah. Um, you could look at pricing it based on like an a, an effort that has to go into it, like you said uh, previously. Okay. Um, but then there's also uh, it's it's figuring out what that starting point is. And I was as you were talking, I was kind of thinking about it. Um, so maybe we have to maybe a, a better way to look at it is in terms of and, I, and you you touched on it there, and I think it's really good it's in terms of what value we're bringing to the customer and what's that really worth to them. Okay. So how do we establish what, what, uh, what is it worth to them? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a process. Um, but uh, basically you ask them, you, you, you get them to, to, to uh, say it to you, right? They say, uh, okay, so I need, I need the speech. Why? Well, I, I want to uh, um, deliver a message. Okay, what will that message bring to you, right? Well, it's going to paint me as, a, as an expert. That's great. Why do, you, why do you want that? And you drill down until you get to a number, right? Um, I don't know. It, um, so if I'm an expert, I'm going to uh, get more more revenue okay how much i don't know of course you don't you don't have a crystal ball but what two percent no no about yeah i don't know not more than 20 okay let's let's call it 15 what's your revenue right now aha uh -huh, okay so that's i don't know sixty thousand a year okay that's that's one impressive speech right um there's more to it, of course, but basically you drill down until they tell you. And then afterwards, when you say your speech is $6,000, they'll say, 6,000 for what? For two pages? No, <laughs> for 60. And they said, but I thought it, it would be like $200. Really? You know a lot of problems that, that can be solved for 200 and bring you 60,000? Because I would love to invest like that, right? Yeah. 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 So, so um, there's a process, but it, the, the, the process is basically drilling down and asking genuine questions uh, uh, until they give it to you in this way or that. It sounds like they're not going to do that, but um, in my experience, it, it can be trained and it's pretty effective. If, if it makes sense to ask why, right? Um, I need a uh, that's why I said value uh, value based is not for everything. So uh, I need my to toilet unclogged. Why? Hey, <laughs> you can't do that, right? You can't do that. that. It could be a high value item depending on whether or not you had burrito night. So yeah, you really have to you got to play that one by ear. Of course, usually. <laughs> those things but those things are repeatable right this yeah. uh, works for 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 mostly non-repeatable non-repeatable yeah. stuff yeah. um okay uh nicole asks uh many of my clients specifically come to me because they have money troubles i sometimes feel guilty for charging what i know uh, i'm worth and wonder the best way to communicate their roi so they understand why it's uh, worth it uh when i uh, talk about uh, charging what you're worth. 
um, it's always about the alternative, right? Uh, if they don't pay you this much, how will how will they their money situation be in two months, six months, a year? Um, I mean, you can look at the ideal. The ideal would be that everybody has enough money and nobody has money troubles. Whoop de do. But uh, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about them having enough money um, and not having enough. In both cases, there's going to be a struggle. But there's going to be much less of a struggle if they pay you what you're worth. So you can actually go on doing what you, uh, what you do and get better at it and help more people be in a better situation. Um, and I think... Um, I think idealism is is great for poetry, but uh, when we're consultants, we can't measure uh, ourselves to 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 the ideal. Um, I don't think that makes sense. Uh, and I think um, if I mean I I had clients who paid me with let's say with their last dime. They are all very happy. They they did that. Right. And uh, I felt immense pressure to, to help them. And I did. And they are uh, uh, unending mine of, of references for me because they know that, that, that I was uh, they knew that I was their last chance. Right. So um, I think keep keep your head high and uh, uh, um, continue charging what you're worth and helping people. And this will en enable you that sometimes you are able to do charity, but then do, do full charity. Don't charge anything. Find a case that is completely hopeless and help them for zero money because you are able to do that because you're charging what you're worth to, to uh, standard clients. That, that would be my advice. And what we do is similar enough that I can feel your pain. Um, okay, I hope I answered that. Uh, Michelle says, I have a mixture of clients that I bill a monthly fee, some attempted value, okay, and other that uh, that will be billed hourly. I found uh, that I've burned, been burned uh -huh, with the value billing because of scope creep. Mm -hmm. This is uh, for outsourced accounting services. Uh, all of the pricing folks in the past have kept saying that we should not, not use hourly billing. What do you think? The trouble with hourly billing is that the better you are, uh, the the worse you Less get. You yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I had actually had a client which lost money uh, on their best programmers because they're done in three hours and they made the most money from interns who were like, hired yesterday because they took three weeks and of course the good programmer had to be paid uh much much more um and yeah um retainers are a good fit i think i have uh, worked with with several accountants and um uh, uh auditor yeah that that's the word i'm currently working with an auditor so um um, I, I understand the uh, feeling. Value-based uh, is often good for a project, not a process. If you're charging for a process, then it's better to uh, ba basically go on a, or on a retainer or such. Uh, but scope creep can be dealt with if it's dealt with uh, at the beginning. Uh, so like in a story, uh, you know, if you, you never read about the main character carrying a knife and suddenly he's attacked by a shark and suddenly he pulls out his knife, knife from, I don't know, his pedos and everybody's like, oh, but if you mention that knife at the beginning, in the first scene, people are like, oh, awesome. I completely forgot about the knife. So um what I'm so saying something is, we can like address it in our agreements. Like yes. this is included, and I, I say it like this. I would say it like this. Uh, this is for the process. Uh, these things are projects, 
So I need uh, some custom uh, table of this and that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are included and these are a project or these are a project if they have to be done within two weeks or something like that. So, you know, urgent, 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 call the accountant. Yeah, that's, so they are a subject of further, uh, 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 let's say, neg negotiations and, and, and stuff. I would do, do that like that. It's uh, a bit hard um, for me to, to, to elaborate on, on uh, the whole idea, but uh, hourly billing is bad. Uh, there are, uh, no, no, look, you can uh, make, make uh, a statement and say this, this was this many hours, um, but it, it's better to, to, to go on retainer and um, you, you are sure and the client is sure and um, it's especially bad if you go on a retainer, but then say, but if there's more work, I'm going to charge you more because that for a client has, uh, is a lose-lose situation. If there's not enough work, they have to pay you. And if it's too much work, they have to pay you more and they have no idea how much the, uh, the accounting will cost that month. Uh, so if you do that, they will go hard on the price. And they will uh, uh, demand to know why is, it taking, uh, why is this taking so long? Why is that taking so long? Uh, why can't you, I don't know, uh, get somebody else to, to do that who is cheaper? Uh, so that's the situation where, where clients go uh, berserk on the, on the whole concept because you, you put them in, into a corner. It looks like a good deal, and it is, but the client has a say as well, right? I, I hope I uh, answered. Okay. So we can probably talk more offline or another week. <laughs> Uh, definitely, I'm up for a coffee chat. Okay. <laughs> uh, Eman, please uh, uh, ask me a question. Sorry, it's just long, so I didn't want to type it. No, um, but basically, I have this client that's been, uh, they, they've been a, a good lead for a while. Uh, they're very cooperative right from the get-go, so I had a good feeling about them. They're ready to move forward, and then they just let me know that um, the government stopped approving one of the products that they wanted to sell. So basically they had a bunch of products that they now needed to throw away and they needed to buy new product. So their budget got uh, messed up all of a sudden, which was okay and understandable. Um, so I offered to do a photo shoot for 10 pictures for their social media and I did it and they were really happy with it. And then they basically tried to say, okay, can you keep helping us until we're able to get back on our feet? So how do you tackle a problem where, you know, you do something for free to help the client out because you thought that they were going to be, you know, ready to move forward afterwards, but then they just keep expecting free work or they just want you to keep helping them out and not pay you. <laughs> um, okay. I would, uh, uh, I would say mm, I would like to do that, but how can I do that, right? How can I do that? I mean, I, I did the, 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 the first thing because I understand it, but um, I have bills to pay as anybody else does, right? And I have right. paying client, clients as well. So if I had no no business whatsoever and didn't have rent to pay yes I, I would like to do that but um, in this way um, how can I do that right so uh, maybe they offer something they offer an option they say um, basically you in any negotiation uh, especially price negotiation it's always nothing for nothing you can't uh, uh, you, you can't give anything without getting something in return. And you say, um, okay, I can do that for I don't know, two, two more weeks if we write down a contract that will uh, uh, mean uh, that after two, uh, those next two weeks, um, as uh, uh, my, my uh, service will stop, uh, 
and it will co continue as soon as you uh, get the funds. And it has to go on at least for, for si six months. Yes? Okay. Right. So I can set up many things in those two weeks that will en enable you, it will enable you, dear client, to do everything yourself. So I can do that. I can set you up, right? Mm -hmm. If uh, uh, down the line I have something from it. And because I did this uh, uh, for free, I would really like you to, to do a 30-second video testimonial for me. Okay? Right. And okay. This, uh, this gives you clear boundaries. It will take some work if you can, if you can handle that. Uh, but it will not go indefinitely and you will definitely set the boundary because you know that by instinct. If you do some, some more work for free, they're never going to pay you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's, Thank it's, you. it's human nature. Yeah, uh, no, no problem. No problem at all. Uh, huh, Michelle says she lo loves to use a question. Says, when you say, how can I do that? You're basically asking them to solve your problem. I mean, it's their problem as well, right? So how can I do that? Um, a, a, cl a client said, uh, I can turn that in, into the ne next question. Uh, a, a client said, um, I send them, you know, three propos proposals, the, the cheapest, the, the, the middle one and the, the most expensive one. And they said, well, well we would like uh, the, the, the middle one for the price of the uh, cheap one. And I said, well, that's that's a nice question. Um, how would they like if their clients ask them to do that, right? I would like, uh, um, I don't know, a truck for the pr pr price of a Ford Fiesta. Can I do that? No, really? Why not? Come on. <laughs> that's not a serious question. That is not a serious question. And uh, uh, in, in that case, um, you can be also unserious and say, yeah, and you guys, I don't know, uh, you guys do paint work. I would, I would like to uh, pay you to, to pay my, uh, to paint, paint one room, but I would like you to do a whole house. How can I do that? Right? Okay. What reason can I give to my customers for raising my price? Oh, that's, that's a classic. Um, so you start uh, with saying, um, I'm better value for you now. So we, be we began working, I don't know, three months ago. And then I didn't know you as a client. Now I do. What I do is not repetitive. It evolves. And now I'm evolved uh, in, in a way that brings you more value in this and this and this and this way. So that, that's, that's the best one. Um, one I would not recommend is saying, I don't know, I learned about this uh, and now I have an, I don't know, an additional diploma. Now, now you have to pay me more. Yeah, that, I, I heard that, but uh, I don't, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say that, that that's a good one. Uh, Sonia gave us a, a question, sorry. My problem is that I have colleagues that have permanent employment and a steady salary. They work, for example, in museums and they charge their extra services out of their main work less than me because they will work for anything because it's always extra earnings for them. I work as a freelancer. That is my only source of income. So I can't afford to work uh, for nothing or very low price. How to compete with that? Okay. Um, classic as well. Um, you can't compete uh, by looking this, uh, the same as them. You have to uh, find a way to differentiate your, yourself from them. So this, you can say this is not the same thing. Um, I, uh, uh, we, we talked before and I know uh, what you do and you are definitely able to do that. And um, so firstly, you, you have to be not, uh, not you, you, don't, you have to be not easily uh, comparable to them. And second thing, um, 
when we talk about price as buyers, there's four components to the price. There's, okay, what it says on the, on the bill, the invoice. There's also uh, the convenience charge. So they may not be able to uh, do what you do at any time because they have their regular jobs and you can't do that. Um, so, you know, they're cheaper, but they can only do, I don't know, Saturdays. Yeah, that's not exactly the same. Um, also, um, they may have some ethical or some uh, uh, law-based uh, responsibilities that you don't. So they can't say this or they can't say that or they can't um, talk about this artist or that artist in this way because they have a retainer with their uh, uh, employer. Um, so that, that's an angle for you. And um, lastly, it's, I mean, it's okay to say it, right? Um, I'm a professional. This, this is the only thing I do. This is what I do all day. And uh, my work is different because of this, this, and this. Uh, and in all those ways, so uh, what I do is not what they do. So my price cannot be compared with their price. Because when buyers buy, they combine these four things. So money cost, convenience cost, risk cost, and ego cost as well. And um, all those four things can make your price more appealing to clients, even though it's actually higher. I hope uh, I, hope I uh, answered that in a way. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, listen, uh, we are at the end of our time today. Everything changes.